One of the hardest things about being a designer is constantly being responsible for coming up with new and unique and interesting ideas. The weight of that responsibility is upon me and I hate it. You gotta get an initial concept that you kind of like and then you have to spend hours riffing on those concepts until you start finding this branch of thought or creativity that you kind of get into. And then you gotta keep working on that and make sure that it works with the client and that it spreads across all platforms like print and marketing and web. The whole thing is exhausting and I don't want to do it anymore. I think I just want to be a farmer. But before we abandon our careers as designers and get into the organic Apple business, there is a tool that can actually help with this and it's called Recraft. I've been enjoying Recraft lately because it's helping me fast forward through all of that ideation process. It's basically a big digital canvas, a big whiteboard for me to riff those ideas and lean on AI to help me with that blank page issue. So today I'm gonna to show you some of my favorite parts of Recraft, how I use it in projects and how you might enjoy it too. To get started with Recraft, just head over to Recraft.ai, their website, and sign up for a free account. And side note, their website is absolutely bonkers. I love it. It's so much fun. And once you've signed up for that free account, you'll actually be able to log in, and this is what you'll see. A nice, simple, easy dashboard. We're currently on the Projects tab, and they've started us off with a series of projects to kind of teach you about all of the basic functionalities and some of the advanced functionality of Recraft. You actually have a community tab where you can see where, what people are creating in the community. Pretty cool. We have a spot where we can place our favorites, see our history and check our profile. But let's head back to the projects and click into that basics tab for now. This project is full of good instruction. And these are some of the things that we're actually going to do here in a minute. We can generate photorealistic images. We can remove backgrounds. We're going to add specific color palettes and then generate imagery off of those color palettes or brands that we have. We can create a style by uploading other images and kind of building everything off of those images. We can then, once we generate images we like, we can mark areas and have them be kind of customized, which is really cool. And then we can also upscale. So let's head back and talk a little bit about the project we're gonna be working on because I have a car wash client and they have nothing. They're just starting out. They have no brand, they have no website, they have no print materials, they need merch, they need all of the stuff. And so you can see here on my desktop, I have a bunch of different basically influences, inspirations, things that they liked that they sent me. And they said, hey, we just want it to look like this. There's a lot of blue and yellow here. There's car, there's suds, it's vector graphics, and that's the style that they like. So that's what we're gonna try to work with. And to do that, we're gonna head back into Recraft and I'm gonna start a brand new project. And I like to start by simply getting rid of a couple things on my desktop and dragging these and dropping them directly onto the canvas. Now here's what's great about this. It's very much like a design tool like Figma or like an organizational tool like Miro where you can drag things around in this big infinite canvas space. I can hold down space and move around and I can grab each of my individual elements and when I grab an element you can see I get all sorts of options that are available to me once I grab those items and I have all my tools up on the left hand side and I have the action panel that's open over here. Now my client really really likes this blue and yellow kind of palette we know that's going to be a thing. We know that that's what they want. And so we're probably going to riff off of some of these ideas. Why don't we start out with a brand new image? So I'm going to click on the canvas instead of clicking on one of my images. And I'm going to hit a vector image like this. And it kind of drags this blank frame out onto the screen. And we're gonna zoom in a little bit more and get close to that. And now we get to dictate what that's going to be, okay? So let's just put that right about there. What are we looking for? Well, we're definitely looking for some vector art. We could make some raster art like photorealism, illustrations, or if I have any styles created, but right now we're just looking for that initial concept of a logo pretty much, right? So let's head back over to vector, vector, art and we'll click vector art just like that and then we can tune that a little bit what do we want to exclude from the image well nothing right now we're going to include a bunch of stuff and start the process but we do know that we want it to be using some of those blue and yellow colors so why don't we just really quickly bring this over into view and i'm going to add 
a couple of colors just by pressing plus right here. And I have a nice little color snapper tool that's on my computer and it allows me just to grab colors really, really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just click on these and snap some of these dark blue, light blue, and then maybe we'll just do one shade of yellow and then maybe we'll leave white there. So now we have a little bit of a color palette that's been created for us that we're gonna be using to create this image right now. What are we looking for? This is where your AI prompt skills are gonna come into play. But thankfully, Recraft lets us just kind of talk in natural language. I need a logo for a car wash that includes a car, uh, suds, water, I don't know if it'll know what suds is. Let's put something like bubbles, water, in a fun vector style, okay? Cool, we're gonna do it one by one right there. It's gonna make two images for us and we are gonna go ahead and press Recraft. All right, it has come up with an initial concept and you can see here down at the bottom we have some other concepts so we can click on it. These are a little bit cartoony. I'm not opposed to it though. I don't hate it. It's just our first attempt. Why don't we start to lean into some of the inspirations we have this time instead of making something from scratch, let's lean on what we know the client likes. Like for instance, our car right here. So we're gonna do something again. We are, instead of gonna be creating a new image, we're gonna fine tune or we can variate, but we're probably gonna stick with fine tune right now, okay? So I'm gonna take this image and they really did like it. I don't want it to be almost identical because I don't want it to be a rip off and I do want it to be fairly similar. So maybe we'll do something more like fairly similar or quite similar. And we're gonna go in here to photo photo real vector, vector art like so. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add a couple of those colors really quickly. And let's just move it out of the way and get in there. I mean, we really just love the blue. The client really loves the dark blue that's there, like so. Again, and let's bring in maybe this darker yellow this time, a little bit more of that gold kind of cornflower yellow color. So now we have our color palette. What are we gonna exclude? Well, what did we not like about what it created for us over here? It does have bubbles, but I don't like how it was a big blob. I liked how there was like waves and some bubbles in this. So maybe we'll be okay. I'm gonna bring this in and I'll do this a similar prompt. Car wash logo, including water, a happy car, let's try something a little bit different, and bubbles, something like that, and we will modify our image. Now again, in this case, it's taking the current inspiration, that image, and it's gonna tweak it and change it using the parameters and the prompts that we've given it. All right, and that is done, and it is very, very similar. Actually, I actually kind of like this one because the car is a little bit more on the happy side. This one's fun too. It's definitely an identifiable car. I think we should go for it. Let's probably work off of this one. We do like what we have going on here. So I know that I probably need to turn this into a logo. So we could riff some more ideas here or if we wanted to, um, and this is what I love. I can zoom out and drag down a new copy and I could modify it even more. Let's play with this version. And why don't we do something like moderately similar? And while that's cooking, I'm gonna come up here to this one and I'm gonna make another copy and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to remove the background just like that. Now. After I remove the background, I'll be able to export this in any format I want. Raster formats like JPEG or PNG. I can also download it as an SVG, which will be perfect to bring into any design softwares I'm using because all everything will be vectorized. Perfect, just like that. That's the exact logo that I want. And while I was doing that, this other one was cooking up some new versions. That is a very happy car. Now what's cool here is I could export all of these out as those SVGs, so it is vector format, pull it into my design tool if I wanted to, and then I could start tweaking, changing, and customizing anything that I don't like. But really, the biggest thing is I'm already, I have like variations and versions of something to show my client. But you know what? I don't like showing my client things that's just a logo on its own. I wanna show it with some mock-ups of some different elements that we might need. So why don't we actually take this really quickly, and I'm going to uh, actually just click right here and hit mock-up. It's gonna put a new square and I'm just gonna do, yeah, maybe something like a white t-shirt. 
That should be easy. A nice white t-shirt. It's a product photo. Fantastic. That's going to be really, really easy to do. And what's really cool is you're going to see here, we can create a mock-up. So a t-shirt, a coffee mug, a whatever, and we'll be able to drag our elements in place and actually mock them up right here inside of Recraft. Let's do another one really quickly, another mock-up, and this one will be, well, let's do a white tote bag. And while we're cooking that one, I'm going to just bring a copy of my logo and I'm gonna shrink my logo down just a little bit. Let's grab the actual logo, resize, and then I'm going to drag it and notice it's loading, it's working, it's doing the magic just like that. So let's actually get rid of that element right there, put it on, and it's actually, you could see through to the actual element itself. So that's kind of cool. Maybe we want to have like a nice big print or maybe we want to do something that's a little bit more up in the corner there. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to drag another version out and I'm going to bring that logo right there. Let's get rid of this one here. It has that, that square because if you wanted to, you could just generate artwork right on it, but we already have our logo created, right? So. We're gonna size this up, drag it. Look at how cool that is that it moves up and all around. Let's do like a nice big print like that. Fantastic. Um, and then why don't we do one more? And in this case, we're gonna do a mock-up, I think of a, let's do a nice white business card as well because our client doesn't have that either. They're definitely gonna need it and it's gonna go to work and start creating for us right there. Perfect. We're gonna move this over to the side. I love that. I'm gonna bring and duplicate and copy that right in there. Actually, let's bring this out and size it down a little bit. And now we can drag it onto our business card just like so, the start of the business card. And you know what, this business card doesn't have any text, so we could bring this into our design tool if we wanted to, or we could just pop some text out right here. So why don't we just pop some text right here. We'll put John Anderson. Is this gonna be the most amazing business card? Maybe, maybe not, but we definitely are gonna be able to showcase how this will look. There we go. I'm gonna duplicate one more and I'll put a phone number inside like that. Okay, great. Now we have the start of a business card. And what's great is I can grab all of these assets. I can export them directly out to PNGs or JPEGs. And so why don't we export those as PNGs or JPEGs and boom, just like that, we have those now. We can actually take our element here and export it. And because it was made that way, man, we can export it out to a Lottie, but let's take it directly as an SVG, just like that. All right, before we finish up, let's create some more assets that we'll be able to use in our project and present to our client, let's create an image set. I'm gonna do that by heading back over to Recraft and you can see we have lots of different styles on screen. We have sample styles, we have real world mock-up styles, but we actually have the the final, the thing we actually outputted here, and that's the logo that we're actually working with. Let's use that style to create a series of images that are all very consistent and tied together. I'm gonna right click on this and say convert to style and I'm gonna convert it to a vector art style. You can see it's kind of transported it or turned it into this kind of like orange box. But what I'm gonna do now is just kind of click on the canvas and I'm gonna hit over here on image set. I'm gonna come up to image set, I'm just gonna drag this into kind of a fresh spot and you can see what do we wanna base our image set off of. Let's drill down and jump over to vector and go over to my styles. We actually have some custom styles set up based off of that illustration. We're gonna select that and you can see that the orange square is tied to the image set here. So it's gonna be using the actual image set that we have selected, right? So now what do we want? We want a car, we want a sponge, we want a bucket, we want, let me see, what else? Uh, let's try something like a windshield that might be kind of like interesting. Uh, let's do like a mascot, like a, a friendly dog, and then maybe we want a shop front of some kind. Now with that being done, we're gonna go ahead and press recraft. And just like that, it has created a consistent image set for us. We can grab these. We could then continue to recraft them, change them, transform them. But we have a nice car, a sponge, a bucket, a car, a dog mascot, and we have our shop front. These are gonna be great to represent our value propositions or different services or different things that we do for the brand. And just like that, we've created a pretty well-rounded brand 
style. So we can use that image set, anything in there. We can use our logo. We have our mockups here that we'll be able to bring in and present to our client. That's an absolute lifesaver. We've done a ton of work really quickly. Well, that's it. That's everything you need to know to get started with Recraft. It's actually a tool that's gonna help you get started with your design work. So that's pretty cool. You should definitely check it out. There's a link down in the description that you can click on to get access to Recraft. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design, development, AI tools to help you as a designer. So make sure you ring that bell so you know when the next video comes out. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and we'll see you in the next one.